I told you, I'm late. For what? Some plans that I made for this evening. Now, what is it that you want to talk to me about? I saw Eric earlier today. Congratulations. Well, yes, thank you. I think I am making some progress. Well, not fast enough from my point of view. Well, then you're going to be very happy when you hear what I told him. Which is? I took complete credit for the fact that you have moved back in and are going to stay with him for the next two months. What? Did you need me to repeat that? Stephanie, that was my decision. You fought me on it. You were totally against it. Yes, but you don't want Eric to believe that. You don't want him to think that you're cooperating or that you're going to give in to whatever it is that he wants. You won't get the divorce any quicker that way. <sighs> Brooke, listen. What's good for me and Eric is good for you and Ridge. That's the rule. That's our golden rule. So I'm going to take credit for anything that's positive where Eric is concerned. Anything positive about your relationship with him. So you're helping Eric win me back. That's counterproductive, Stephanie. That doesn't make sense. No, Eric isn't going to get you back because you're not going to let him. What you've got to do now is start working really hard to alienate him. I can't believe I'm letting you do this to me. Brooke, you want Ridge. And I don't get Ridge unless you get Eric. Exactly. I get closer to Eric by helping him get what it is that he thinks he wants. At this moment, he wants you. You have to make him understand that you are not worth having. So I have to be the ogre, and you're the ever-loving, ever-loyal ex-wife. Mm -hmm. This is really cruel. No, it's more than cruel. It's... No, it isn't. It's reality. Now, you may not want to face that, but you have to. If you want Ridge, you have to start working. You've got to make Eric think that, that you are the most selfish, self-involved, self-centered person that he's ever known. Of course, on second thought, that shouldn't be too hard, should it? It really should be a piece of cake for you. Just be yourself, Brooke. You must be late. The woman you're meeting. How do you know I'm meeting a woman? Oh, it's true. You brought your work with you. There you go. It's just I've never seen you in my restaurant without a woman by your side. Pierre, I have sat at that bar alone at least a dozen times. Now, you, you may have come here alone, but usually it wasn't long before someone would join you. You know, Ridge, you should have been a Frenchman. Oh, you guys have it over me. <laughs> I wish I knew half the beautiful women you know. What do you mean you know all of them? Why do you think they come here? It's your place, not mine. But they know they're going to find you here. But that's just a line. They're coming here to see you. You should hear Brooke Logan talk about you. That's good for about an hour and a half. At least. <laughs> hey, Brooke. So what are you guys talking about? Oh, just uh, male stuff. You mean female stuff. Oh, what stuff they have. Come and sit down. I'll have the waiter bring you a wine glass. Actually, I could use a martini. Yeah, what's the story? Your mother called me over for one of her fist fights. Say no more. What she's doing? I thought the guy was calling from Italy. So we're talking about the weather, common friends, women we've known. And loved. And loved. Anyway, it suddenly occurs to me that it's got to be the middle of the night there. So I said, Carl, what the hell time is it? He says it's 2 p.m. I said, that's impossible. It's 2 p.m. here. 
This is Ridge. I'm calling from the Beverly Hills Hotel. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like an idiot or what? Ridge, couldn't you tell that it wasn't long distance? Sometimes you get a good connection, all right? Oh, Ridge. So that's the story of my day. Gaffs, goofs, and gloom. Tell me about the gloom. Mm. You already know about that. Don't ask. You want to talk some more about you and Mother? No, I'm just going to have to put up with her. This is Stephanie's dream come true. What is? She gets to beat up on me, and I'm expected to beat up on myself, all in the name of freeing myself from Eric. I can't really argue with the goal, but it galls me every time she takes advantage like that. Logan, you don't have to put up with this. I'm going to talk to her. Wait, no, not yet. Why not? Because I want to keep the hostility level in check. At least until Eric and I get divorced. I still don't like the fact that she can drag you down here. She's not dragging me down. Logan, I don't like the idea of you doing Ridge. this. Ridge! Listen. Saved by our song. I think I'm ready to go back to my place. Rich, I have to go home tonight. Oh, I'll get you home. By sunup. No, I really do have to go home now. Now? I didn't tell Eric I was going out, and he's probably waiting for me. And the baby. Look, the baby's doing a night with his father. There's nothing wrong with that. <sighs> Let's not argue, okay? You tell Dad not to expect you too early tomorrow night, all right? I would like a table for one, please. And you really better make it as far away from Mr. Forrester as possible. Sure. Oh, excuse me. Ask yes, Pierre to give me my check. Oh, certainly, sir.
You want your check? Yes, please. You sure you want it? Why don't you hold it for a while? You won't, Ridge. The French have nothing over you. Excuse me. This chair taken? Yes. This one here? That one, too. What about this one back here? I'm sorry, none of them are available. Hmm. Well, in that case, I'll have to pull up my own, then. I ran into your friend as she scurried out. My friend? Well, I can't call her your girlfriend since she's married to your father, and I really can't call her your fiancé. All right, I get the drift. Kind of an early end to an evening, wasn't it? Yeah, I guess it was. Your idea or hers? Hers. So I take it she's going through with it? Yeah. For the next two months, she'll be living with my father. I really don't know how I'm going to deal with that. Where's the baby? Asleep. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope he wasn't any problem. A problem? Eric's my son. How could he possibly be a problem? I guess I'm just feeling a little guilty. Don't. Brooke, I love spending my evenings with Eric. I'd rather be here with him than anywhere else. And you think I wouldn't? You're a good mother, Brooke. Nobody's accusing you of neglect. Don't start accusing yourself. Besides, Eric's not the issue here. What is? An agreement we made. An agreement you're already starting to break. Brooke, when I asked you to move back in here with me for the next two months, I expected some kind of a commitment. Not a roommate. Now you're here. You've agreed to it. I expect you to live up to the terms of that commitment. What exactly are the terms of that commitment, Eric? Except for sharing a bed, you and I live together as husband and wife for the next two months. And if at the end of that time you still want a divorce, I'll give you one. With no hesitation. Not a moment. Okay. Well, I've accepted those terms, so what's the problem? No, you haven't accepted those terms. Yes, I have. Brooke, a wife does not spend her evening even being romanced by someone other than her husband, I really shouldn't have to explain that to you. So what are you saying, Eric, that I shouldn't be seeing Ridge? Not at all? Is that what you're telling me? You're concerned that she may be slipping through your fingers? Brooke? That is what you're worried about. Look, if she wants to take up again with my father, that's certainly her prerogative. I'm not talking about prerogatives, Reg. I'm talking about you and your feelings and your fears. Give me a break, Doc. Why else would you be fighting this two-month hiatus that your father is insisting on? Because it's not necessary, that's why. Brooke knows what she wants, and so do I. I just think we should all get on with it. I'm going to say something that you don't want to hear, but I'll say it anyway. I don't believe that Brooke has any idea what she really wants. Yeah, you said stuff like that before. Bridge, if she had no vulnerability to Eric, she would not have agreed to stay with him. Look, she's just doing it for him, to help him through this transition. Please. All right, tell me exactly what you're saying here. I have a suggestion. This should be a classic. You let them have their two months together. See what happens. I can tell you exactly what'll happen. Brooke and I'll feel exactly the same. If you're so confident about that, then you have nothing to lose. 
But if you have even the slightest doubt, then you owe it to yourself to back away and let Brooke and Eric have some space. Test these relationships. Shake them down. See where the fabric is. I don't know, Doc. If I do that, I might uh, spend a couple of lonely months. You'd manage. I might even have to find myself a therapist. I have a very good list of some very good doctors in Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills? I live there. I don't want to do therapy there. Well, that's all right, because I have tons of good therapists all over L.A. Well, maybe I already have a good therapist. I don't think it would be appropriate for you and I to be working together. Not under these circumstances. Well, maybe we'll just do it a little more informally. Where you could see me and I wouldn't have to pay you and you could just help me get through these lonely times. Under the table therapy? Under the table therapy, I like that. I like that. In fact, maybe we could do our first therapy session right here. Care to crawl under? You are being so ridiculous that now I've lost my appetite and I have to go home. Will you think about what I said? Will you think about what I said? Goodbye, Rich. How about under the sheet therapy? What I'm telling you, Brooke, is simply this. For the next two months, you and I are husband and wife. We have a child. We live as a family. In other words, I am not to see Rich. In other words, you are to spend your evenings here with me. We have meals together. We spend time together. Brooke, this is not some charade. That's not why I asked for this arrangement. I'm not so sure I can do this. You know your options. Either I go along with it, or you prevent me from having a divorce. No, I can't prevent a divorce, but I can delay it. And it should be delayed. Why, Eric? Why should it be delayed? Because from my point of view, which is considerably more experienced than yours, you're making a colossal mistake. You're jumping right from one marriage into another one. At least, at the very least, you need to take time to see what went wrong with the last one. And living with you for two months will do that. It'll be a lot faster than fighting me in court for two years. Eric. I cannot promise that I won't see Rich. I don't ask you to promise that. Why do you keep saying that? Fine. Let's just drop it. Brooke, I expect you to treat this marriage like it's real. Real? Yes. Whether you're in this home with me or whether you're out with Rich, you're Mrs. Eric Forrester. You behave as Mrs. Eric Forrester. I don't want that forgotten.